general subject of this conference, the intrinsic and organic building up of the church as the body of Christ. Method 2. The intrinsic growth of the church for its organic increase. Roman number 1. The intrinsic growth, the organic growth of the church is the growth in the divine life with the process and dispensing triune God. Roman number 2. The organic increase of the church is the increase of Christ in his organic body as his bride. Thank you, Lord, for another annual feast where we can enjoy together in the Southern Conference. Although the COVID situation actually hasn't improved, but we do have the spiritual food that supplies us richly. In this conference, we all know the title, which is the intrinsic and the organic building up of the church as the body of Christ. Some of the saints may have this thought where we're talking about the body of Christ again, the church again. And I would like to say to the saints that we actually talk about this topic since 1989. But why are we repeating this? It's because the church, which is the body of Christ, is urgently significant for Christ to obtain his bride and as our preparation for his return. Because at the end of this age, he is coming. Our Lord is coming. But are we actually ready for his coming? If we are those who are ready, then we need to care for the building up of the church as the body of Christ. In this second message, we will enter into the intrinsic growth of the church for its organic increase. In the second half of this message, Brother Liu Yong will mention the organic increase of the church actually means that the church needs to become the increase of Christ. As John the Baptist has already spoken in John 3, 29 to 30, which you can see there that John says, he who has a bride has a bridegroom. And then he also mentions, we must decrease and he must increase. So the increase of Christ is the bride. On the other hand, when we're mentioning the increase of Christ, it is the church as the bride of Christ. So we can see that this message is for us to become his bride. But the process, before we enter into the second half of this message, firstly, we must answer this question, how do we become the bride of Christ? But the title states very clearly that we need to have the intrinsic growth of the church. So when we're mentioning intrinsic, some of us feel that we understand this word already, but actually in English, the word intrinsic, you can translate it as inward or intrinsic. However, the word that we will be using in this message, we're not using inward, but we're talking about intrinsic. What is the difference between inward and intrinsic? If we look at Brother Lee's writing, for example, the divine dispensing of the divine trinity, or the four crucial elements of the Bible, there Brother Lee spoke regarding intrinsic, which we're using for this message, we're speaking about the deepest part of our being. In the book, The Four Crucial Elements of the Bible, Brother Lee compared, for example, if we have a green bean, we can see the outer shell, that is the outer cover, and once you remove the cover, then you, you touch the secondary skin, which is the inward. But if we take the core out, then you see its kernel, that is, its intrinsic aspect. In this message, we will enter into the intrinsic, the kernel of the intrinsic growth of the church. So then what is the intrinsic growth? In the first Roman numeral, mentions the intrinsic growth or the organic growth of the church is the growth in the divine life, which is the process dispensing triune God. So actually, when we read this message in the present time, if we skim through it, we will not receive anything. So we would like to actively and gradually enter into the contents of this message together. Firstly, when we mention the church, usually not a lot of people will use the word the growth of the church. I understand that not a lot of people can use this or they won't use this. 
while in the beginning stage when we were registering for the church, the officers told us to correct this word, the growth of the church, because they understood that the church is an organization. The church cannot grow. In this aspect, the understanding is correct according to the vocab. But when we're entering or mentioning about the growth of the church, we're not talking about the organization, but we're talking about the church as the body of Christ, as a normal title in each conference. If the church is not the body, then the church can only increase as an organization. But thank you, Lord, where the church is not the organization, the church is the organic body of Christ. So as the body of Christ, we can grow. Then how do we actually grow? This growth needs to happen in the divine life. Amen. Since the church is the living and organic body, it can only grow when this divine life grows. So what then is the divine life? In the first Roman numeral, in the last part, the divine life, which is the processed and dispensing triune God. My understanding is that in the first Roman numeral in A, in the last message, you can see this point very clearly. And in the last message, you should have such a clear impression that the process of the triune God is something that has already been completed. However, the dispensing of the triune God is still happening currently. So if we want to compare this point to the first Roman numeral in the last message, we can see what is life. The life is the triune God who is processed, and now he is dispensing. Amen. That is the life that we're mentioning. How does the church grow intrinsically? This body can grow only if there is the triune God. And the triune God is not dormant. He has been processed. Otherwise, he cannot dispense himself because he's processed. Today, he is dispensing himself into our being. Amen. A, the church grows in this life, by this life, with this life, and through this life. So what is this life? This life is the triune God himself who has been processed, and now he is dispensing himself. B, which is the burden that I would like to speak to the brothers and sisters, this point mentions Colossians 2.19, which speaks of the growth of the body. So here, what is the growth of the body? The growth of the body is the growth of God within us. Amen. Colossians 2.19 tells us that we need to grow with the growth of God. The English word for this is the growth of God, or in literal translation is God is growing. But if we translate it in this way, we could not understand it because we fall into the idea that God is growing. Does God still need to grow? And that is correct because God in himself, he does not need to grow. But for us to grow, this God needs to grow within us. This is why we use this word, the growth of God. This does not mean that God is growing, but this means that this God needs to increase and to grow within us, in the church. So when God grows, the growth of God is within us, then the church as the body of Christ can actually grow. Amen. So here, I think I read this in B3. I can read this again. The growth of the body depends on the growth of God. The addition of God, the increase of God within us. Amen. A, I already mentioned this. God is not growing in himself because he is complete and perfect. But the problem is within us. How much do we have Christ? If we want the church to grow, then this God needs to grow within us. Once God grows within us, then there is the divine life, the increase of the divine life. Thank you, Lord. Here in this message, since we take this message from actually a book that Brother Lee spoke in 1989, and in that book, the second message is the same title as this outline. 
So in message two, Brother Lee spoke about the two factors that pertains to our growth in life. And this message speaks about another two factors that allows and causes us to grow. So two plus two is four. I would like to bring this four factors that we can cooperate with God so that we can grow to fellowship with the saints. It is true. On the one hand, when we are reading regards to 3c, which mentions 1 Corinthians 3, 6 to 7, very clearly that the one who causes the growth is God. Because only God causes the growth. However, regardless, it doesn't mean that God would cause us to grow in ourselves, to increase in ourselves, or God would want us to grow without our cooperation. So I would like to fellowship four points in our cooperation with God so that God will cause us to grow. What are these four points? These four points, the first point is in B2 in our outline, which mentions the growth of the body depends on what comes out of Christ as the head. Amen. So how do we actually cooperate with him? In Colossians 2.19, which tells us to hold the head. So we need to hold the head. When we look into Ephesians 4.15 to 16 here, it tells us, although it doesn't speak about holding the head, but holding to truth in love. And we read in the footnotes, the truth here is the reality that is Christ himself. Amen. So we need to hold Christ as the head. The issue is that we will grow up into the head. Into the head. And Ephesians 4.16 speaks about out from whom, which means it is out from the head. It is because the head that causes the growth. So the first and foremost thing that we need to do so that God will cause us to grow is we need to hold Christ as the head. Alternatively, we can also say we need to take him as the head. Take him as the head in everything. Otherwise, we will not receive anything from him that allows his body to grow at all. Dear brothers and sisters, the only way for the body to grow, it is through the head and from the head, not by ourselves, not from ourselves. For us to cooperate, to allow the body to grow, we need to receive everything from the head. This is only possible when we submit to the head, which is Christ. This is the first point for us to cooperate with God, for him to cause the growth. The second and third point is not in the outline, but from that book. The second point is for us to eat Christ by eating the word. Amen. In 1 Peter 2.2, which speaks very clearly for us to grow in life. We need to eat the guileless milk of the word. So we can see, oh, for us to drink the milk, we need the word because that is the guileless milk of the word. Some of us know in ourselves, we do not like to read. We like to listen or we want to watch the video because when we read, we are bored and we would fall asleep. If we are this kind of person, then it's very difficult for us to grow because the milk is in the word. Amen. It is not only the word that is the guileless milk. The verse also mentions to drink the guileless milk of the word, you may grow unto salvation. But if we read Hebrews 5, 12 to 14, Hebrews 5, 12 to 14, which mentions that milk is only for infants. However, for the adults, they do need to partake of solid food. So when we read the Bible, we cannot just read the verse that we prefer, but we do need to read the ones that are very difficult to understand, especially in this outline. Very much like the past conference, we do need to read them 
if we do not read them, that we cannot grow and mature. Here, when we speak about reading the Word of God, we're not just speaking about the understanding through the mind, but we need to read in order to touch the Spirit that is in the Word. When we touch the Spirit that is in the Word, we can touch Christ Himself. In John 6, 63, the Lord said very clearly, His words are spirit and are life. If we only read the Bible as the letter, then it becomes a letter that kills and kills us. But if we touch the spirit that is in the word, it will cause us to receive life. The Lord also speaks in John 5, 39 to 40. You search the scriptures because you thought that in them you have eternal life, but you do not come to me to receive eternal life. Some people read the Bible without receiving life. It means that he reads the Bible without coming to Christ as the Spirit. So dear brothers and sisters, when we're reading the Bible, we do need to understand. But what's more important is that we need to exercise our spirit to touch the Holy Spirit, which is Christ in the Word. How do we do this? It is through prayer reading. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In the message for the building up of the new believers, we mentioned this already. If you have time, please watch that message again and bring this into practice in our daily life. Not only that we have the corporate prayer reading with other saints, we do need the personal prayer reading as we're reading the Word of God so that we can touch life. Amen. That is how we drink of the guileless milk of the Word and to partake of the solid food in the Bible so that we can grow. This is our cooperation with God in the second point. The third point, if we want to cooperate with God so that we can grow, this is from 1 Corinthians 3, 6-7. In this verse, before the part where God causes the growth, Paul wrote that Paul plants. So dear brothers and sisters, thank you, Lord, we are all planted. But before God can cause us to grow, Paul also says there is a need of Apollos who waters. So Apollos and Paul, in this verse, what does this mean? It actually means the gifted ones. Amen. The gifted ones who are in the body are those who are able to water us. We can observe that Paul does not wrote the Corinthians watered themselves. But Paul mentions the one who waters is Apollos. Dear brothers and sisters, if you would like to be watered, and we think we need to read the Bible by ourselves and do not join the meetings, it is impossible. Amen. Paul speaks very clearly. It's, it's not the Corinthians who water themselves, but Apollos who comes to water them. Why do we need to join the corporate meeting? Some of us will feel, oh, before the COVID situation, we kind of already have a lot of meetings, but now in the COVID situation, we have so much me more meetings. Do you not feel that you have been watered through these meetings more than reading the Bible by yourselves? It is true we do need to read the Word by ourselves personally, but when we enter into the meeting, we receive a lot more than when we are personally reading the Bible. So we need to be watered through the gifted ones. Some things we might not understand when we read ourselves, but when we're together in the meeting, it feels like there's a sprinkler that waters us. So in this message, Brother Lee gave us an example of California, where if you have been to California, generally you know that California is very dry. But if you go to California, you realize that it's actually not so dry at all. Why is that? It is because they have installed sprinkling system from Nevada that supplies to California. So dear brothers and sisters, actually, in California, you will never see green plants. But because of Nevada, they're able to receive this kind of supply. If we want God to cause us to grow, but God says we need to be watered by the conferences, by the meetings from the gifted members, that will cause us to grow. So this is the third point. So in the fourth point, that is on the outline, which is on D. Before I enter into D, I would like to 
mentioned the matter of the attitude in our coming to join the meetings for us to be watered. In a verse I would like to share with the saints, that is in Proverbs 11.25, which says, He who waters, he also shall be watered himself. If we want to be watered, the requirement is that you need to water others. When you water others, you will be watered yourself. So dear brothers and sisters, on the one hand, we do need to be watered from the gifted members. But on the other hand, if we want to be watered even more ourselves, when we are coming to the meeting, we need to ask the Lord, Lord, cause me to be those who have something to water others in the meetings. In Deuteronomy 16.16, 16, which says, any of those who came to the feasts, there is a requirement is that they cannot appear before Jehovah empty-handed. This is directly correlated with 1 Corinthians 14.26 that whenever, I would like to emphasize, whenever you come together, each one has. Each one has a psalm, has a teaching, has a revelation. There is no one who comes empty-handed. So dear brothers and sisters, when we come to the meetings, if we want to be watered, we need to water others as well. After this message, at the end of this message, you also need to water one another. This is the way for us to be watered. So now we're entering to the fourth point. In B4, which says, how much God grows within us depends on how much room we give him to grow. Dear brothers and sisters, we need to know that on God's side, he does not have any problem. He is so ready to dispense himself into us so that we can grow all the time. Because we know that the triune God has been processed and he's currently dispensing himself. But because we did not receive the dispensing and we're not growing, the problem is not on God, but on us, but on which part in our being. Actually, the problem is in our soul, in our heart. We need to open ourselves to the Lord every day so that he shines within us to show us the stone within our hearts. Do we have thorns in our heart? The stones are the hidden sins. This includes our self-pity. Do you feel pity in yourselves to come to the meetings every day? If you all feel this way, then there is a stone within your heart that prevents God from growing within us. And thorns is the anxieties in life on what to eat or what to drink. Another thing that is an obstacle to our growth is the hard earth or the hard way. This is not from the stone, but it is from the traffic in the world. If you spend so much time to watch the internet and look at this or that, it is your trafficking in the world obstructing the growth of God in us. So these are the four points that we need to cooperate with God so that he could cause the growth within us. So these four points I repeat again. First, we need to learn to take Christ as the head, to be submissive to the head, submit to the head since the head causes the growth of the body. Secondly, we need to eat the word, drink the guileless milk of the word, and also to partake of the solid food in the word. To eat of the word is not to understand, but it is to bring us, bring our spirit to touch the spirit of life, which is Christ himself embodied in the word of God. Third point, we need to cooperate with God, that is to corporately come to the meetings because to be watered is to be with the gifted members. And we also need to learn to water others so that we could be watered ourselves. And the last point, God is waiting to cause us to grow. If we give him the ground to grow, this ground is in our heart. We need to deal with the conditions in our heart, whether it is rocky with the hardened place or the thorns that chokes the life of God, causing the life to not be able to grow. So we enter into the last point in the first Roman numeral. In C, from Ephesians 4.13, which says the church grows until it reaches maturity, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Amen. Oh, here, the significant point that we would like to mention is 
If we look in Ephesians 4, 13, Paul says, Until we all arrive, Amen, at the oneness of the faith and of the full knowledge of the Son of God, at a full-grown man, at the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, firstly, I would like you to observe the word we, means we all, including Paul. Do you think it includes Paul's as well? Of course. So Paul is still not grown up yet or mature yet. So why is it that Paul is speaking about until we all arrive, almost saying that he is not there yet? It is because Paul sees that the growth in life is not an individual person, not personally. Of course, personally, we need to grow. However, we need to see that our growth is not for ourselves, but our growth is for the entire body of Christ until we all arrive as a full-grown man. The English word uses full-grown man. Man. The same word, man, as the one new man. Amen. Our growth, we need to arrive at becoming the one new man in Christ and to become his bride. So, O oh Lord Jesus, may he have mercy on us to open our eyes for us to see that the growth in us, in ourselves, is not for ourselves. Amen. So we can see Roman numeral 1 C, and then under 4 and under B, and then parentheses 1. Sorry, it's very, very long. To have the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ is not a matter for individuals, but it is a matter for a corporate body. We all need to see that when we're not growing, it is not a problem personally for us. But if we do not grow, the church as the body is not growing as well. Amen. So we are actually delaying the growth of the church. On the one hand, we need to see that the growth, our personal growth, it's also not for ourselves, but it is for the body to be built. So look at me, saints. If one particular organ in my body is growing by itself, then that particular part of my body is like cancer. It's cancerous, isn't it right? Because the growth in the body is for the entire body. May the Lord enlarge our views so that we can see that we are not seeking our personal gains or our personal benefits. We need to bring what we receive from Christ to dispense, to minister to other saints, and we need to have the same attitude with Paul to think, to see that we all need to arrive at the oneness of the faith, at the full knowledge of the Son of God, at the full-grown man, at the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That is for us to become the one new man, the full-grown man, so that Christ could obtain the church as the increase of Christ, also as a counterpart, the bride of Christ awaits for his return. May the Lord bless us in this entire year with the normal growth in life every day until we arrive as the body of Christ. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. A moment ago, Brother Matthew has shared in a very rich way, and even more, he has shared in the intrinsic matter of this message. I would like to review in this conference because the message in this conference, it is from a series of message given in the full-time training in 1989, which speaks about the five intrinsic matters. The four matters are relating to the positive side, which is the church. And another point is the negative side, which is the winds of teaching. In the first message, we speak about the intrinsic essence which is for the existence of the church. The second message speaks about the intrinsic growth, which is the organic growth that is not an outward growth, but an intrinsic growth. Thank you, Lord. In this previous message, although mentions that our intrinsic 
essence of the church is relating to the divine life. And the second message also tells us that the divine life within us needs to grow. So there are two verses that we need to focus on. The first verse is in Colossians 2.19, which says, And not holding the head out from whom all the body, being richly supplied and knit together by means of the joints and sinews, grows with the growth of God. So here it says that we need to grow, not by ourselves, but it is the growth of Christ in us. When he grows, we grow as well. This growth, there is a requirement, is that we need to take him as our head, holding the head. So the verse here tells us that we need to grow, and this growth, we need to grow onto what measure? So in Ephesians 4.13 speaks about arriving at the three things until we all arrive at the oneness of the faith and the full knowledge of the Son of God at a full-grown man at the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. To reach a full-grown man, it is to be mature in life. What does it mean to be a full-grown man? The third point, it is to arrive at the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Thank you, Lord. In this verse, it shows us that the church as the body of Christ has a need to grow intrinsically. This growth is also personally, individually, and corporately. The intrinsic growth, the issue is to arrive at the full-grown man. To be this full-grown man, it is the fullness of Christ. At the stature of the fullness of Christ. It is likened to the increase of Christ in the body, in the organic body as his bride, Once we hear this word, we might feel that it is quite unclear. So then I would like to focus on a specific word or phrase. The first phrase is the divine life within us to grow, needs to grow. The second point is that this growth is the intrinsic growth. Third, the measure of this growth needs to reach the full grown man. What is to be a full grown man? It is to reach the fullness of Christ. The fullness of Christ is the increase of Christ. Hallelujah. Lastly, will consummate in the new Jerusalem. That is, the triune God who has entered into us as life and mingled with us by nature to be mingled with our person, the tripartite man, to express God in this universe to become the one body. This is God's heart's desire. Thank you and praise the Lord. In the second message, the title speaks about the intrinsic growth of the church for its organic increase. There are two Roman numerals. The first Roman numeral speaks about the intrinsic growth. The second Roman numeral points to the organic increase. When we look at the intrinsic growth, what is this growth? The first point is the growth of the divine life within us. That is the increase of God in us. Furthermore, this increase must be continual until we reach the full measure of the fullness of Christ as the expression so that he would be expressed. Hallelujah. In the second Roman numeral, it is the organic increase. This organic increase of the church is not the increase of 
quantity of how many people there are. What is this increase? This increase is the increase of Christ in his organic body as his bride. Becomes the fullness of Christ, which is his body, that is unlimited. This increase comes from our speaking of the word of God. Thank you, Lord. Here it says that he must increase and I must decrease. So, there is a requirement for this increase. On the Lord's side, he must increase. On our side, we must decrease. Amen. It is very much like the new man and the old man. We need to put on the new man. Then from our side, we need to put off our old man. So the bridge to this matter is that we need to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. For us to be renewed in the spirit of our mind, it means that we need to speak God's word. Because God's word is the word that has been given to us completely and freely by the Spirit. By the brothers before us, we can see the Bible that unveils many matters. The first matter is God. Secondly, it is the Word. That is, God's speaking. And then the Word became flesh. And then fourth, the flesh being tabernacled, becoming the life-giving Spirit. The last Adam became the life-giving Spirit. The fifth point is in Ephesians 6. The Spirit, there's another name that is the Word of God. So altogether, this point is God, the Word, the Word becoming the flesh, the flesh being tabernacled, becoming the life-giving Spirit, and the Spirit is the Word of God. Altogether, being mingled with our Spirit then the Lord can increase within us. We need to speak God's word. By speaking of God's word, we allow God to increase and to grow. We also have a verse in Acts. The first point is in Acts 6, 7, which says, and the word of God grew. Then in Acts 12, 24, which says, the word of God grew and multiplied. And Acts 19, 20, not only that the word of God grew and multiplied, the word of God also prevailed. The issue of when the word of God grew and multiplied and prevailed is that God would increase in all the saints in the church. Even the priests listened to God's word. Thank you, Lord. Today, the church is in the Lord's recovery by God's word. We're able to grow, multiply, and prevail, causing the seeking ones in the denominations to turn to the Lord's recovery. This is through this word causing them to enter into the local churches among us. Thank you, Lord. So we need to treasure God's speaking. By our treasuring His Word, Christ will gain His increase and will gain His duplication. Very much like the morning revival that mentions the Lord Jesus is the first God-man, the complete God and perfect man. He is also the prototype of the God-man. He wants to gain his duplication, those who are conformed to him, as the many God-men. According to Romans 8, 28 and 29, tells us that we needed to be conformed to the image of his son, the firstborn among many brothers. So, we need to be 
the ones who are conformed to the image of Christ. We need to be conformed in the mold, in all the environments for us to suffer, for us to receive the divine dispensing, causing us to be conformed to the image of Christ in life and in nature. Amen. Thank you and praise the Lord. Lastly, in E causes us to see he does not want just individual Christians, but he wants to obtain the corporate Christ. This is a picture because the corporate Christ is composed of Christ as the head and the church as his body with all the believers as members. Amen. In this way, we as believers and members in the body need to function. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We need to live in the body and for the body. And the message shows us the important point, which firstly is the word. Secondly, we need to live a life in the body. And this needs to be worked out within us, upon us. We need to be trained by cooperating with the 10-year plan in Thailand. Although we are just a member in the body, it might be difficult for us to grow, but first we need to drink the guileless milk of the word. Secondly, through the gifted ones, they would water us to supply us so that we would grow. Third, in a corporate way, we need to pursue in the meetings of the churches. There's a pursuit, there's prophesying, there is corporate prayer. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Through the washing of the water in the word, to wash away all our sickness, all the negative factors negative aspects in us, all our negative attitude, our own opinions, our natural man, if all these things are not dealt with, Christ cannot increase and the church cannot increase. Thank you, Lord, by such a training causes us to be emptied. We have more ground for the Lord to increase within us. According to the revelation in the Bible, Christ is living in us. He wants to make home in our being, and he wants to be constituted in us. Furthermore, he wants to live through us for us to express him. Lastly, we would become like Paul, who says, Even now, Christ would be magnified in my body, whether through life or through death. For me to live is Christ. So, our prayer, our preaching of the gospel, Lord Jesus, for your move in Thailand, I need to be filled with you so that you would increase, so that you can spread within me for me to live as Christ. Amen. Lastly, we need to enter into the burden spoken in this message, as a burden, that is the Word of God. We need to treasure God's Word, and we need to walk in the path to be constituted with this Word, allowing this Word to dwell in us richly. Not only that, once we are constituted with the Word, we need to supply His Word, God's Word, to others. In this way, we would be functioning members in the body, in the living of the church life, to follow the direction and to take part in the move. Having the morning revival, to have corporate prayer, we can press on corporately for this matter 
we need the third point, which is our burden. For Christ to increase, personally, individually, we need to go and preach the gospel. We need to visit, to contact people, and to supply others. Amen. It is not through an outward teaching or doctrine, but it is by an organic way, a supply, a nourishment, shepherding, organic shepherding. So in the past year, ev almost every month we have a conference. And in churches, there's always a move. Not only the conference, whether in Thai language or Chinese language, we have the message for building up the new believers. And every month we have a gospel meeting. Everything is done through online platform. So this is very good, but it is not enough. We need to pray and wait until the COVID situation subsides. Then we will go out. We need to go out. Every one of us needs to go out to find our gospel friends, to be their friend. Afterwards, bring them to become brothers and sisters in the church life and to perfect them so that they would become our co-workers and we would all become his disciples. When we say disciples in the old language, the meaning is relating to the training for us to be trained. If we're not trained, we cannot become his disciples. For the increase of the church, we need to take the new way to take the intrinsic way for the organic growth, causing the church to grow and increase. There are four steps. The first step is to preach the gospel to beget. The second step is through visiting, nourishing, shepherding in our group meetings. Because in some localities, we might not be able to visit personally, but we can also still call. We can still shepherd them through the phone. And thirdly, it is through group meetings to perfect the saints. Lastly, when we have this district meeting in the bread breaking meeting, in our prophesying meeting, through prophesying, which causes the church to be built up, the prophesying, we know that is to speak Christ, to speak Christ into others. Amen. By doing so, if we are those who train, we can encourage our gospel friends to be trained, encourage those who we shepherd. In this way, the church would have an increase, would have a building up. I hope that all the saints, through the speaking of his word in this meeting, turns us from an outward way to the intrinsic way, allowing the divine life within us to grow so that we would arrive at the full grown man, at the measure of the fullness of Christ. In our corporate living, we need to enjoy his word together. I would like to give my personal testimony. During these times, I have been invited into different line groups in pursuing with the saints in Europe. In every week, on Monday in the afternoon, we pursue the spiritual books in every day. We also share. We also share our verse memorization. And I was touched by one of the saints in his sharing. And I was filled with joy because we read the messages together. After we read the message, we can ask some questions. We can supply one another and we can share one another. So thank you, Lord. It is from 4 to 5 p.m. 
But even after 5 p.m., we still are not able to finish. We don't have enough time. So, dear brothers and sisters, I hope that in every line group, in every district, in every meetings, we would have this desire to partake of God's word in this way. And then afterwards, we would have a burden to others to invite other people, not just to invite them, but furthermore, we need to go out. We need to find them in their homes. If we cannot go physically, we can still use our phones to call them. We can pray for them. Or we can also offer for them. Offer material offerings. If we have this kind of practice and this kind of training, God's move and His blessing would be poured upon the churches in Thailand, resulting in a genuine growth. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank the Lord. We came to message to talk about the intrinsic growth of the church for its organic increase. Thank you, Lord. Our God is a God with goals. His goal is to obtain the church. The church with is His body. The church is not an organization, not just a building. But the church is the organic body of Christ. The body can grow and grow to be intrinsic and organic. Thank you, Lord. In Roman number one, we know what is intrinsic growth. What is organic growth? That is the growth of divine life. The divine life is the processes and dispensing triune God. Amen. We will see that the church is us. We were begotten of God. John 1, 12 to 13 tells us that we are those who believe into His name. He has given us the authority to become children of God. We were begotten of God. We have the God's lie. We are children of God. We become His church. He wants His church to grow. We will see that there is another crucial verse. Colossians 2.19 say that, How do we grow? There are four crucial methods in Colossians 2.19. First, we need to hold Christ as the head. Second, the growth of the body depends on the richly supplies come from the head. Third, through the operations in the measures of its one pass, causes the growth of the body. And the last matter, his body can grow only through the growth of God. Amen. Thanks, the Lord. Actually, the Lord himself does not need to grow because he is complete and perfect. But today he must grow in the body, grow in us. So the growth of the body is the growth of God, the increase of God within us. Today we need to pray to the Lord to increase within us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah in Roman number one talk about the intrinsic growth with is the organic growth. The church is not an organization, but the church is the organic body of Christ, which is can grow. And brother told us that the growth of the church is the increasing of God within all the believer. Amen. So for how much God grow within us depends on how much room we give Him to grow. According to Ephesians 3, 16, 17, we need to be strengthened with the power into the inner man that Christ may make His home in our hearts to strain. The verse 
make his home means he absolutely have his room in us. He can process every part of us. Amen. Every morning when we come to the Lord, we call upon his name, pray, read his words, we empty ourselves by this. All things not to be lost, even we know or not, the Lord is increasing within us and make us grow. Amen. Growing day by day. Finally, Ephesians 4, 13 will become the result. A full grown man at the measures of the stages of the fullness of Christ. Christ is the head. He is the infinite God. Today we ask his body to immensely grow. Amen. We have to concern our growth. We have to preach the gospel to people. In the other hand, we don't need quantities. We want quality. All the brothers and sisters whom got saved must grow in. So we need to go to shepherds, bring God to dispensing. We must speak for God, speak for God, speak God into other. We should become the supply channels. We must bring the fullness of Christ dispense into people. When we dispense, we must see that we not only supply some saints, but we are supplying the shares, supplying the bodies, for the body can grow and building up of itself in love. Amen. Thanks the Lord. In Roman number two, reveal to us the organic increase of the church is the increase of Christ in his organic body as his bride. Brother and sister, let us see the words in Gospel of John chapter 3, verse 29 and 30. Verse 29 said that he who has the bride is the bridegroom. And in verse 30 said that he must increase by these two verses. We can say the increase of Christ is his bride. And who is the bride? The bride is all the believers who were regenerated. So regenerations not only bring the divine life into the believers, but it also make them the corporate bride for Christ in Christ. Brother and sister, we also need to see verse 34 talk about how Christ increased. Christ increased by speaking God's word and through speaking he will unlimited give the spirit brother and sister we have to treasure the speaking of God because every God speaking the spirit is dispensing himself into us and this dispense is unlimited to us so we have to trace to this two days conference. We should receive God's speaking. Don't let the words pass to us. We must bring God's word into PSRP. For God's words become spirit and life to us. The more we come to contact God and receive God's word, the more we were nourished. We were supplied by the spirit. And Christ will increase in us. We not only receive the words, but we also become the channels for God speaking through. For 10 years plans, we should preach the gospel, bring God's word to nourishing into people. We should bring all the online messages, share to our friends, our gospel fans, for them can hear God speaking. When they heard the words of God, the Spirit of God to be the realities of what He spoke in order to dispense eternal life into them. 
for them can regenerate, making them the children of God to be the parts of increasing of Christ, which is his bride. Amen. This is the way how God increasing himself. Amen. Finally, brother and sister, all the regenerated people, joy to God's organic calling, we will constitute by God's life and God's elements. We will become his reproductions, become his body, which is corporate Christ, composed of Christ at the head, and the church as his body, with all the believers as members, and all of this is for his expression. Praise the Lord. The building of new believer, the burdens of building of new believer, in John 10, revealed Jesus is the good shepherd, giving his life on the cross. After that, he was resurrected and becoming the spirit, came to Peter's in John 21 to assign shepherd's work and ascended to the heaven, doing the heavenly ministry. First Peter 5 to say that the elders should shepherd the frog of God on the earth, cooperate things with Christ's heavenly ministry, for we can gain the rivers in his returns at the great shepherd. So brother and sister, we should have a burden of shepherding, especially the new believers with is the chief of the flock of God until the Lord's coming back. The building of new believer verse has arranged the meetings there are 24 messages in light group conference 1, 2, and 3 once a week. These 24 messages are from the Morning Revival book, Building Up New Believers, Series 1. 12 messages and another 12 messages are from Lessons on Life. Every Lord Day, 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. We are inviting all the saints with the new believer to join this meeting together. May everyone be supplies and review for our life can grow up, for the building up of the church become the one new man. The process of the meetings, what the message in YouTube, in channel called the Gospel Book Room in Thailand, the Church of God in Bangkok. When you finish listening to the message, you can go into the light group according to your locality to share your enjoyments. Each one has one minute. Finally, there will be a brothers who will summarize the message and announce the time of the next meeting. Brother and sister can listen and share your testimony in the YouTube Building Up the New Believer. During Monday to Saturday, brother and sister can send the Q&A and testimony video to the new believer that you are contacting. First Peter 5, 2 to 3, shepherds the flock of God among you, overseeing not under compulsions, but willingly, according to God, not by seeking gain through base means, but eagerly nor as lodging is over your allotment, but by becoming pastors of the flock.